Okay, ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to talk about the cell membrane. And this is actually a lot more vital than most people think about uh, because the cell membrane is actually kind of really where all of the really cool stuff happens in the cells. Yeah, you're going to learn about organelles and all that other happy hoo-ha-ha, -ha, but the cell membrane is really where the action's at. And if you think about different things like how drugs work in the body and everything else, they really work on the cell membrane. In fact, the Nobel Prize in 2012 was given to two chemists who worked on uh, receptors in the cell membrane. So we're going to look at just uh, a couple of things on the cell membrane and talk about a little bit about it. But as you can see here, the cell membrane is extremely complex in structure. So we're going to look at a smaller portion to get a feel for the cell membrane itself. The double layer of phospholipids aligns so that the tails made of the fatty acid chains face each other. Um, the phosphate heads will always face out. The heads are known as hydrophilic because they are polar and they respond well to being in a watery environment. The inside of the cell, the cytoplasm, is made mostly of water, and the outside of the cell, um, which is the environment or the extracellular flu fluid, is also mostly water. Um, the fatty acid chains of the tails are nonpolar and are hydrophobic. They don't mix well with water. It's just like mixing oil and vinegar. They don't really mix. You can shake them up, make little globs, but they don't mix. So this bilayered structure creates a very selective environment in which very few molecules or ions can pass directly through the membrane without a specific transporter so that the cell can regulate its own environment and respond to changes in its environment. Proteins in the cell mem membrane have three basic functions and you do need to know these three things. Okay, they have three basic functions. They function as transporters for water, other molecules, and ions. They function as identifiers for the cell, which means that there are structures that identify self versus foreign cells to our immune system, and they help give us things like tissue and blood types. And proteins finally act as attachment points where the cells can join together within the tissues. So they actually stick cells together. Cholesterol is also part of the cell membranes itself. Most people, when they hear the word cholesterol, they immediately think of bad stuff that can cause heart attacks. And yes, cholesterol is part of that. Um, but cholesterol is needed in small proportions to help to maintain the fluidity of the cell membrane. The fluidity is specific because cell membranes are not rigid structures. They're fluid. All fluids aren't liquids. For example, glass is a very hard fluid that flows very slowly. It's a non-Newtonian fluid. But in the presence of cholesterol in the cell membrane allows fluidity in the cell membrane. The cell membrane actually moves and rotates, similar to the shields that were in Star Wars Episode One, which is what this picture is. You can see that there are small pieces floating around in the shield, and they move around the shield constantly. This is similar to the colors you see in soap bubbles. Soap bubbles don't have a single color, and they don't stay the same in the same location. Um, this is very similar to the phospholipids of the cell membrane that are moving constantly. So if you care, they move at about 2 micrometers a second, which is 10 to the negative 6th meters per second. Okay, so that's the fluid part, but what about the mosaic? Remember I said the cell membrane's a fluid mosaic. The proteins in the cell membrane would be equivalent to the tiles that make up a mosaic picture. They move too, but they're bigger and heavier, so they move at a slower rate than the phospholipids do. So the phospholipids are kind of jumbling around, and as they jumble around, the proteins kind of get moved as well. So that means that the picture is constantly changing from this to this, to this. All right, so all of this mo movement and that selectivity of the membrane, because you've got the hydrophobic portions and the hydrophilic portions, this creates specific traffic flows. Hydrophobic molecules can cross with ease because they can dissolve in the phospholipid bilayer, but they don't do very well with the phospho um, they don't do very well in the phosphate head section. Small polar molecules sometimes can pass, such as water and carbon dioxide. 
Water can be pretty difficult though. Large polar molecules will not pass. Things like sugar, they don't pass through the membrane by itself. They need a transporter. Ions also do not readily pass, such as hydrogen, chlorine, and sodium ions. They need special transport proteins. Finally, when you talk about ions moving from one side to the other, you talk about concentration gradient. A concentration gradient is a regular concentration change of a substance over a distance in a particular direction. The greater the concentration gradient is, the faster substances move toward equilibrium. If you keep the concentration gradient in mind for the next lecture, which we'll talk about different types of passive transport. So I will see you next week and we will talk about those then. Have a great day.